Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Following the Pledge of Allegiance, please remain standing. I'll turn it over to Councilman McGrath and Shockey. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As October is Domestic Abuse Prevention Awareness Month, I'd like to have a moment of silence for every person who is currently experiencing abuse in their relationship, every life lost to domestic abuse, and every survivor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Shockey. The first item on our agenda this evening is the approval of our minutes from the October 13th meeting. Are there any comments or questions regarding those? Motion to approve. Second. To approve the minutes, Ms. Rogan? Yes. Ryan Kirk? Yes. Ed Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selkirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Del Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. At this time, we'll have the public session. If anyone in the audience is in the safe, the good and well for the city of Brooklyn, Please step forward, state your name and address, and you'll be recognized. Please remember to keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. Okay, there's no one. This time we'll move on with reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We'll begin this evening with the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee meets at 6.15 prior to the start of all regularly scheduled council meetings. This evening we discussed the following. We had six different donation notifications that were given to us. They were a donation of 200 mask packets from Clean Committed Destination in Cleveland, a $1,653.25 award for Bulletproof Vest for the Police Department from the 2020 Patrick Leahy Bulletproof Vest Partnership, funding from Ohio Arts Council's START program for $1,067. This is a matching fund grant for the Recreation Department, $5,459.83 award for assistance to firefighter grant, the COVID-19 supplemental programs, Donation from Triad Engineering of $800 towards the City of Brooklyn Thanksgiving Food Program. And lastly was Keep America Beautiful Award of 13 cigarette butt receptacles to keep Brooklyn beautiful for use in our city. Then we also discussed Resolution 2020-9, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Cuyahoga County Board of Health and, Human Health and Human Services for 2021. This is an agreement we enter into every year with the county. The cost is $60,871, which is the same as last year. And then lastly was ordinance 2020-43, authorizing the mayor to enter into a consultant agreement with Glaus, Pyle, Schomer, Burns, and DeHaven Incorporated, or GPT Group. And this is uh, the consultant group in regards to the police station and potential new city hall. Again, the finance committee meets at 6.15 prior, prior to each council meeting. At this time, we'll now move on with the recreation board, Council Matansky. Thank you. Youth basketball is being offered at the Recreation Center for grades three to six. Resident fee, $60. Registration is open and will run through October 31st. There will be a weeknight practice and Saturday games November 2020 through March 2021. Season dates may be adjusted to accommodate for COVID specific guidelines. Practices and home games to be held at Brooklyn Middle School Fieldhouse. Volunteer coaches will manage teams and parents will be contacted in November by their assigned coach. Boy games to be held at Middleburg Heights, Brook Park, North Domestead, North Ridgeville, Columbia Station, Fairview Park, Westlake, and Strongsville. If you have any questions about any programs, contact the rec center 216-351-5334 or email reinfo at brooklynohio.gov. Next recreation board meeting will be held on November 16th, 7 p.m. in the rec center meeting. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chansky. Next up, legislative update, Councilman Valbeer. Thank you. Thank you. Dealing with the closed economy and COVID-19, it really is a balancing act. We need to keep the economy functioning while limiting the effect of COVID-19 infections. The Ohio Senate just introduced Senate Bill 374, 
to reinstate the authorized hours of operation for liquor permit premises that existed prior to the state of emergency declared in response to COVID-19 and to declare an emergency. In other words, this will expand the hours of operation for serving liquor back to the original times allowed prior to the COVID-19 shutdowns. I believe this will help the restaurant bar industry that has suffered so much. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Next up, Planning Commission, Councilman Subrook. Thank you. The Planning Commission has its next meeting November 4th, 2020 at 6 p.m. We have three things on our agenda. The first is a request for, from um, Cleveland American LLC and Holdings Cleveland American LLC for a preliminary site plan approval at Zero Memphis Avenue. Along with that, a request from Cleveland American LLC and Holdings Cleveland American LLC for a conditional use for a wholesale business with warehousing facilities in a general business district at Zero Memphis Avenue. And the last request is from Valley College for a banner sign for six months at 8720 Brook Park Avenue. That concludes our my report. Thank you. Next up is Committee of the Whole. We did meet this evening uh, following the Finance Committee meeting prior to Council. But we discussed two items on the agenda. The first is Resolution 2020-10. And this is on first reading, but we hope to pass by emergency. This is a placing of a moratorium on the granting of building permits for any building structure, use, or change of use that would enable the construction of storage units or self-service storage facilities for a period not to exceed 180 days from the effective date of this resolution declaring an emergency. Uh, the mayor gave us the reasoning for this, and that is that many cities in our area are, granting, are passing moratoriums on this due to a large influx of these types of facilities. And so we can, until we can kind of assess what's going on with these, we're going to uh, pass or we'll vote to pass this this evening by emergency, and it's for 180 days. And then uh, the second item on first reading is Ordinance 2020-45. Uh, this amend, amends Section 759.02, Bag Collection and Recycling of the Codified Orders of the City of Brooklyn. Residents may recall last year uh, we passed a, um, our own ordinance regarding uh, plastic bags. The county banned them. Uh, the city exercised our home rule, home rule authority and overruled that ban. But a part of that um, ordinance was that the stores that provided them would have to provide recycling containers. And it was a little bit, um, it kind of uh, ran afoul with the new legislation that the state of Ohio passed, which said that bans of any type cannot be passed for a solid year. And so this ordinance amends our ordinance to make sure that it coincides with the new Ohio law uh, that has gone into effect. And then in the committee of the whole, Mr. Raguz also uh, gave us the finance committee report. I won't repeat that because he will be giving that report here shortly. And then we did go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, some item, the potential purchase of property as well as in, in the committee of the whole. And again, these meetings do take place following the finance committee meeting just prior to all regularly scheduled council meetings. We'll now move on with reports of council. We'll begin this evening with Mrs. Grodick. Thank you. I hope you don't mind indulging this mother. But it was right about this time in 2012 that my oldest son, Teddy, came home from his college for, for his fall break. I picked him up from the airport and we drove straight downtown together to vote early and in person. It was his first time voting for a president. And I have to say, what a, it was quite an honor to be able to be with him while he voted for his president for the first time. I did have to trade his Thanksgiving break. He stayed on, on campus for Thanksgiving that year. But it was so worth it to be able to do that with him. And it still stands out as one of my favorite mother memories. Many residents in Brooklyn, probably more than half of residents in Brooklyn, are registered to vote. Don't let that opportunity pass by. If you aren't sure where to go or what to do, contact anyone on council. We'll be more than happy to help you. And I'm sure you'll be hearing many more details from my colleagues on council exactly how to do it. I proudly wear my I Vote sticker, and I'll have to tell you every time I vote, I think about that day in 2012 when I got to vote with Teddy in person. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Next up, Mrs. Ryan Chucky. Thank you. Uh, piggybacking once again off of uh, Councilwoman Grudek, I'm going to let all of our audience now and our residents know a few uh, 
early voting hours because early voting is still taking place in Ohio between now and Monday, a week from now. So hours this week, Monday through Friday, are 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. On Saturday, you can vote at the County uh, Board of Elections from 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. And again on Sunday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote early on Monday, November 2nd, between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Lines have been long, which I appreciate, and I love that people are going out to vote early, especially on the weekend, so make sure you leave yourself plenty of time if you plan to head down and vote early. If you haven't returned your absentee ballot, you can do so either by dropping it off at the 24-hour drop box at the Board of Elections, or return it in the mail uh, with the necessary 70 cents postage. Be sure that you have a plan and that you vote this general election. Pending state control board approval, there is new CARES Act relief funds available in the form of three different relief grants and assistance. These include the Small Business Relief Grant, the Bar and Restaurant Assistant Fund, and the Home Relief Grant, which I want to highlight a little bit of details. It is designated, er, it is, sorry, it is designed to help with rent, mortgage, water, and sewer utility bills. Applications open on November 2nd to apply for this relief. For more information, you can visit https colon backslash backslash, backslash business help Ohio, sorry, business help dot Ohio dot gov and search for the Home Relief Grant. Thank you to Representative Bright Sweeney for this information. And finally, we did wrap up our community cleanups a little over a week ago. We ended on a high note with a dozen volunteers coming out to our final cleanup on October 17th. I'll expand on some statistics at our next meeting, but a brief overview shows that we had 196 hours of community service between June and October, which was an increase of over 50 hours from our first year of cleanups in 2019. Then that's my report. Thank you, next, next up, Mr. Selgerts. Thank you. Uh, the final fresh produce giveaway by Mother's Yard will be tomorrow at, in the parking lot of St. Elias Church. It'll be from 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, an election news type stuff. Uh, if you can uh, support, if you can afford it, please support issue 70. It's an issue for the Cuyahoga County Public Library System. It's the nation's top rated public library. And the current 2.5 mil levy is one of the lowest millages of any public library system in the country. Uh, as Meg mentioned, we had our last cleanup. Thank you to all the volunteers who came out and donated their time, be it either on a Saturday or Sunday morning, to an effort to clean up and beautify our town, Brooklyn. Thanks to Kevin Hitansky for joining me on the 4 ramps by both Tiedemann and Ridge. Yes, we even cleaned up the Cleveland one since a number of people really don't know where the actual border is, but it also gives you a first impression coming into our town, be it good or bad. And hopefully, we try to make it a good impression. The sad thing through all these efforts is that, give it a few days or a week or two, we're kind of back to the same spot of where the litter keeps on popping up. Uh, we just have to make a better effort in education next year. And we're going to actually try to include Knight's Commons a little bit more next year in our cleanup efforts. Brooklyn High School Post Prom Committee is doing a fundraiser at Chipotle this Wednesday from 4 to 8 p.m. Bring in your flyer or show the advertisement on your show, uh, smartphone or tell the cashier just that you're supporting the cause. Uh, with that, 33% of the proceeds will go to our Post Prom Committee. Uh, Post Prom Committee is also holding a Halloween breakfast this Saturday, October 31st. Please contact Jill Sunnell or Genevieve Fowler uh, for information on that. Judging for the Halloween decorating contest, the judges will be out this Thursday evening. So if you have time, please make sure that your lights are on. Uh, they'll be going around taking pictures. They'll try to get some of them posted on the city. Uh, web page and Facebook page. And one other thing is with uh, the arts mural from what we're working with with the high school. We met today with Chris Casper and also with uh, Brian from Sharon Williams. 
Uh, it's an ever-changing world with COVID right now. Since we last talked with Chris Casper, half of his class, instead of being in person, has now gone to the, uh, being remote or online learning. So he's from down, from 20 people down to about eight or 10 people in his class. So that was one factor in our decision what we're coming up with. Uh, there's also the weather now. This week, the only day that looks good was Wednesday, which is actually would have been the priming, prepping of the wall. The following week, they have professional days for teachers, and we just keep on pushing back with various factors. End result is uh, we're going ahead with the mural, but we're going to hold off till next spring when the weather turns backwards, always going in a positive direction. Right now, there's just too many wild card factors. Uh, and kind of go backwards, one last thing with uh, what they've reported. With the volunteer hours, Keep America Beautiful does a reporting scheme where they come out the value. For 196 hours of volunteer time, that comes out to roughly a value of almost $5,000 of value that the city received for people working, volunteer stuff. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Sellers. Next up, Mrs. Pucci. Thank you. Good evening. Last Monday afternoon, October 19th, the Branding Committee met with Falgren Mortin. We settled on a logo, which may be tweaked a bit, and the next step will be a tagline. That same evening, we had our first 2021 budget meeting, which focused on the capital budget. I'd like to thank Mr. Raguse, the directors and chiefs for their efforts. I think it was a good first meeting as we prepare uh, for 2021. And our next budget meeting is Monday, November 2nd at 6 p.m. in the Senior Center. And I am going to be a little redundant um, on the election. It is in one week from tomorrow. Please vote. Encourage your family and friends to vote. It's getting a little late for vote by mail, although technically the deadline to have a vote by mail application in is 12 noon on Saturday. However, if you wait that late, it's really doubtful that you're going to get a ballot and then be able to get it back in time unless you would receive it on Monday and then uh, drop it off in person. Um, Ms. Ryan Shockey already mentioned the hours for the uh, early voting in person down at the Board of Elections, which is expanded beginning this week. If you are voting on Election Day, please know that there will be lines. Um, it, there will definitely be lines because of physical distancing. So when you see a line, even if it goes to outside, it may not be as long a wait as you might think because they are gonna be spacing people out between six and eight feet. Um, however, I would leave plenty of time um, just in case there is a, a more lengthy wait. And as Councilman Selchertz mentioned about issue 70, the library issue, that is the last item on the ballot in Brooklyn. So make sure you go all the way down to the end of the ballot and um, finish the ballot. That completes my report, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Belvier. Thank you. Um, just a small, quick uh, school, school board report. Parents are always advised to check the uh, Brooklyn School website because that's where you find the newest information from the superintendent, especially concerning in-person and remote learning. Whatever the county's color coding will directly affect the educational model. Are they always found on the website? If they enter purple, all activities will be put on pause till further notice. The football season has been officially over. I'd like to extend my condolences to the Euchre family. They live on Winter Lane with the loss of uh, Mr. Euchre, Bob Euchre. He was a, life, uh, a long lifetime resident of Brooklyn. Very nice family, dear longtime friends of the Balbeers and uh, our, our former mayor, Rich. They uh, kind of hung out together, so uh, my condolences to them. The entire country is awaiting a COVID-19 vaccine, which may be available by the end of the year. In anticipation of a vaccine, Ohio plans to roll out distributing the vaccine in four phases and gives the first dose to high-risk health workers and first responders, according to a draft plan released by the state's health department. 
The first phase of the plan prioritized patients in long-term facilities and with significantly higher risks of developing severe COVID complications due to pre-existing conditions, according to the draft plan dated October 16th. The state submitted the 61-page plan to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for approval. The second phase of the plan calls for the vaccine to be given to healthcare workers and other essential services, service workers who are at high risk for exposure. The second phase also includes teachers, teachers, school staff members, and older Ohioans with pre-existing conditions. Phase two also includes inmates and staff of prisons and jails, as well as homeless shelters, people of color, who have disproportionately been harmed may also be included in phase two. The third phase includes young adults and children. The fourth phase allows all Ohioans, Ohioans to be vaccinated. One caveat, however, is that the CDC has cautioned that any approved vaccine could be in short supply because it takes time to manufacture and distribute enough doses. Of FYI, Ohio passed a horrific milestone last week. More than 5,000 state residents have lost their lives to the coronavirus. That is more Ohioans than that have died in the Korean and Vietnam wars combined. And that concludes my report. Something to think about. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Tansky. Thank you. I'm going to echo about the election too, and then uh, get into some directions that's fairly easy to get down to that uh, Board of Elections. Just a reminder to all registered voters, if you haven't already done so, make sure your voice is heard. Exercise your right to vote by voting in this upcoming election, either by mail or in person at the polls. If you're coming from 77 or 71 into Cleveland, get off the Chester. It's real easy. Get off the Chester. All you have to do is hang a right, 30th Street, and hang another right. When you get up to the Board of Elections, you don't even got to get out of your car. Just hand the ballots right through the window. They have lock boxes set up down the street. You put the ballots right in the lock box. Lock box. So it's pretty easy to, so a lot of residents have already came to me that, hey, my ballot's not going to make it. I don't want to really drive down there and wait all this. The lines are moving rather quickly. <clears throat> I was today, I dropped off my ballot, so it's, it's really not that hard. Like I said, it's right off the freeway, right up 30th, and right out the window, they'll give you a sticker that you voted and you're on your way. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tansky. Just one additional item. Um, we talked about this in the committee the whole meeting, but November 1st does start the uh, citywide parking ban uh, for um, uh, residents of the city from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. So uh, make sure that you are parking your driveway. Ho hopefully the snow does not follow suit, right? But on November 1st, that is the currently is the parking ban. And that concludes my report. Next up, Mayor. Thank you, Council President Van Kirk. I just have a few things. I uh, want to remind everyone, Saturday's Halloween. We are uh, recognizing that holiday. Our safety forces will be out from 6 to 8. Uh, if you are interested in participating, make sure you have your light on. Again, we are asking everyone to follow the CDC guidelines and recommendations. Uh, your kids wear masks. Those passing out candy wear masks. I was talking to my uh, economic development director today. His city had it last night. He said a lot of residents put out tables at the end of their driveway, separated the candy. It seemed to go a lot faster and, and made everyone feel safe. So any kind of thing that you see online that kind of helps the process makes people feel more comfortable uh, so we can still enjoy the holiday but you know feel a little bit safer uh, also uh, I advise council and me as a whole but just to keep the public updated on the police station build city hall build uh, we have moved into a phase where we're going to pick an architect we had 12 applicants as I said at the last meeting we narrowed that down to four firms uh, Bowen K2M and DSA, which joined together for the application. Brandstetter, Carroll, and Dewberry, uh, we interviewed those four firms uh, and decided to move forward with a negotiation with Bowen. 
Um, that contract will hopefully go to City Council at the next meeting. Uh, as far as the master plan update, uh, the Cuyahoga County Master Plan Commission will be here at the next meeting to do a presentation for City Council through the committee as a whole. That presentation will be taped with our um, videographer, Rob Calvert, at 6.30. So if you can make it early, you want to come for the presentation, or if you can't come, it, it will be taped. Um, also, if anyone has any comments, they'll be launching an uh, opportunity to give feedback as well. Uh, Meg gave an update on the rent mortgage relief for the state of Ohio. Our building department has all that information and my assistant will launch it on the website uh, for easy access. She did already send out a blast email to all the renters and uh, rent people who rent uh, houses in our community. Uh, but if you need any information or help with that, you could reach the building department at 216-635-4203 or you can contact my office at 216-635-4220. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Merrick. We'll now move on with records reports. Begin the scene with our finance director, Mr. Reviews. Thank you very much, Council President Medkirk. Uh, just a brief overview of the general fund financial statements through September 2020. Overall revenues are 79% of the estimated amounts and 8% less than last year, mainly as a result of the, our revenue losses that we've experienced due to COVID over the last six months. As we discussed at the budget work session last Monday, I expect our actual revenues to exceed our estimated revenues. On the bottom half of the income statement with our commitments, our commitments are 72% of the budget amount, 3% less than prior year, mainly as a result of the CARES Act money that we received so far through September in the amount of $394,000 that we shifted public safety personnel costs from the general fund to the coronavirus relief fund in accordance with the guidance issued by the U.S. Treasury Department. That puts our overall unencumbered fund balance in the general fund to $18.2 million, up $1.6 million through the year. Additional items are related to COVID. I've included estimated financial losses, revenue losses as, re as it relates to COVID. Approximately $1.2 million of losses we've experienced through September, with $1.1 million of those estimated in the general fund. We've also included our um, burrito distributions for October, or just a little bit, about $30,000 more than what we received last October 2019. So that's a positive sign. Hopefully our income taxes have stabilized and will continue going forward. And that concludes my report for the general fund financial statements. And as Councilwoman Pucci mentioned in her report, we do have a general fund budget work session Monday, November 2nd, 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is our Fire Chief, Chief Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. Uh, just quick, uh, uh, I have two quick announcements. Uh, I want to remind everybody that our annual Veterans Day breakfast that was scheduled for November 8th has been canceled, obviously, because of the, uh, um, the pandemic. Um, second, uh, Sunday, November 1st is the end of daylight savings time. Uh, this is a good reminder for everyone to check their batteries and make sure that their smoke detectors, as well as their carbon monoxide detectors, are in good working order. If you should need assistance with this or need a smoke detector, please contact the fire department at 216-635-4288. And that completes my report. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Chief Paul. Next up is our police chief, Chief Bucky. I'll be brief. Uh, Halloween, Saturday, 6 to 8, put your light on. We will have extra uh, police officers out on patrol. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> we'll now move on with legislation for this evening. As I mentioned in the Finance Code Report, we do have several donations. The first of which is a donation of 200 ma mask packets from Clean Committed Destination Cleveland. So we thank them for that donation. Next is a $1,653.25 award for bulletproof vests for the police department from the 2020 Patrick Leahy Bulletproof Vest Partnership. Next is funding from uh, the Ohio Arts Start Program for $1,067. Again, this is a matching grant uh, for, from the Recreation Department, so we thank the Start Program for that. 
Next is a $5,459.83 award for assistance to firefighter grant from the COVID-19 supplemental program. And this, um, this grant will receive uh, various types of mask, shoe covers, uh, PPE, PPE type equipment. Uh, next is a donation from Triad Engineering of $800 toward the City of Brooklyn Thanksgiving food program. So thank you to Triad for that donation and for the food for those that will benefit the city. And then lastly is a Keep America Beautiful Award of 13 uh, cigarette butt receptacles to keep Brooklyn beautiful uh, for use in the city. So we thank once again Keep, uh, keep America Beautiful for those. Um, that's a large amount of litter in our city is those cigarette butts. Hopefully that will help cut down on that. Under legislation this evening, the first item on our agenda from last meeting is resolution 2020-9, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Cuyahoga County Board of Health for, for Health Services for 2021. And this is on second reading. Ordinance 2020-43, authorizing the mayor to enter into a consultant agreement with Glaus, Pyle, Schomer, Burns, and DeHaven Incorporated, or GPD group. Uh, and again, this is on second reading, and this is the consultant that we're looking at partnering with for our police station slash city hall. Under new business this evening is resolution 2020-10. This is on first reading, but we hope to pass by suspension of the rules. This is placing a moratorium on the granting of building permits for any building structure, use, or change of use that would enable the construction of storage units or self-storage facil facilities for a period not to exceed 180 days from the effective date of this resolution and declaring an emergency. Are there any additional comments or questions? Introduce by I'll suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules. Sue Grobeck? Yes. Ron Van Yes. Ryan Shockey? Yes. Yes. Andy Seller. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Del Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. To adapt. Sue Brodick. Yes. Ryan Van Yes. Meg Ryan Yes. Andy Seller. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Del Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. And the last item on our agenda is ordinance 2020-45, which is on first reading, amending section 759.02, bag collection and recycling of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn, Ohio. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Does anyone on council, the mayor and directors, have anything like to add? Move to adjourn. Second. To adjourn. Sue Brodick? Yes. Brian Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackney? Yes. Andy Seller? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Del Yes. Evan Kansky? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening.